the anatomy of the knee joint. Introduction. To gain a better understanding of knee problems, it is important to understand the anatomy of the knee joint and how parts of the knee work together to maintain normal function. The important structures of the knee can be divided into a few main categories. Bones, joints, ligaments, meniscus, muscles, and tendons. Anatomical terms. First, let's define the relevant anatomical terms to help us understand the knee joint anatomy and function. Anterior, forward, or on the front of the body. For example, the kneecap is located anterior to the femur. Posterior, towards or on the back of the body, behind. Superior, towards the head or upper part of a structure, above. For example, the femur is superior to the tibia. Inferior, toward the lower part of a structure, below. Medial, toward or at the midline of the body, inner side. For example, the kneecap is medial to the lateral femoral condyle. Lateral, away from the body's midline, outer side, such as the lateral collateral ligament is on the lateral aspect of the knee joint. Proximal, close to the origin of a point of reference. For example, the femur is proximal to the tibia. Distal, far from the origin or point of reference. Superficial, near the body's surface. For example, the patellus tendon is more superficial than the anterior cruciate ligament. Profundus, deep. The bones. Let's start with the bones. The knee joint is one of the largest and most complex joints in the body. It consists of four bones and an extensive network of ligaments and muscles. The four bones that form the knee joint are the thigh bone, the femur, the shin bone, the tibia, the kneecap, the patella, and the fibula. The knee joint. Let's take a look at the knee joint. The knee joint is made up of two parts. The part of the knee between the end of the thigh bone, the femur, and the top of the shin bone, the tibia, is called the tibiofemoral joint. The patellofemoral joint is between the end of the femur and the patella. Patellofemoral joint. The knee joint is a synovial joint. Synovial joints are enclosed by a ligament capsule and contain a fluid called synovial fluid that lubricates the joint. Both joints are covered with articular cartilage. It is a slippery substance that allows the surfaces to slide against one another without damage to either surface. The function of articular cartilage is to absorb shock and provide an extremely smooth surface to facilitate motion. The ligaments. The knee consists of many ligaments. Ligaments are tough bands of tissue that connect the ends of bones together. The ligaments protect the knee and provide stability. Let's take a look at the four most important ligaments. First, we have the medial collateral ligament, or MCL, and the lateral collateral ligament, or LCL, are found on either side of the knee joint. The MCL and LCL prevent the knee from moving too far in the side-to-side -side direction. Inside the knee joint, there are two other important ligaments that stretch between the femur and the tibia. These are the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, at the front, and the posterior cruciate ligament, PCL, at the back. The ACL keeps the tibia from sliding too far forward in relation to the femur, and the PCL keeps the tibia from sliding too far backward in relation to the femur. Together, the ACL and PCL control the back and forth motion of the knee. Meniscus There are two menisci in the space between the femoral and tibial condyles the medial meniscus, and the lateral meniscus. The menisci of the knee are important for two main reasons. One, they work like a gasket to spread the force from the weight of the body over a larger area and protect the knee joint cartilage. Two, they help stabilize the knee by acting like a wedge. 
The menisci are thicker around the outside, and this thickness helps keep the round femur from rolling on the flat tibia. Movement The ligaments and meniscus provide static stability, and the muscles and tendons dynamic stability. The main movement of the knee is flexion-extension. For that matter, the knee acts as a hinge joint, whereby the articular surfaces of the femur roll and glide over the tibial surface. During flexion and extension, the tibia and patella act as one structure in relation to the femur. The knee joint also includes some rotational movement between the femur and the tibia. This rotational movement is part of the screw home mechanism, which is a key element of knee stability. It occurs at the end of knee extension between full extension, 0 degrees, and 20 degrees of knee flexion. Muscles and Tendons there are many muscles surrounding the knee joint. Those muscles move the knee joint back and forth. When the muscles contract, the tendons are pulled and the bone is moved. First, let's talk about the extensor muscles of the knee joint. The primary extensor muscles of the knee joint are the quadriceps femoris, assisted by the tensor fascia latae. The quadriceps femoris is comprised of four heads. Three heads originate from the femur, and the fourth head, the rectus femoris, originates from the anterior superior iliac spine. The muscles that form the quadriceps femoris unite proximal to the knee and attach to the patella via the quadriceps tendon. In turn, the patella is attached to the tibial tuberosity by the patella ligament. The tensor fascia latae is attached to the iliotibial band. The iliotibial band extends further inferiorly and inserts into the lateral condyle of the tibia, also known as Gerdes tubercle. We've talked about the knee extensor muscles, now let's review the knee flexor muscles. The primary knee flexor muscles are the hamstrings, assisted by the sartorius, the gracilis, the gastrocnemius, and the popliteus. The hamstrings muscle consists of three long separate muscles. These muscles originate from the ischial tuberosity and insert below the knee joint. The semimembranosus inserts into the posterior medial condyle of the tibia. The semitendinosus inserts into the medial surface of the proximal tibia. The third muscle is the biceps femoris, which has two heads. The long head, which inserts into the head of the fibula, the biceps femoris short head does not originate with the rest of the hamstrings. It originates from the posterior femur and inserts into the head of the fibula. Additional knee flexor muscles are the sartorius, the gracilis, the gastrocnemius, and the popliteus. Let's take a closer look at these now. The sartorius and the gracilis, along with the semitendinosus, all insert into the anteromedial aspect of the tibia, also known as the pace and serenus or goose foot. Next, we have the gastrocnemius, which has two heads. The medial head originates from the medial epicondyles of the femur, and the lateral head originates from the lateral epicondyles of the femur. Both heads connect into the Achilles tendon and insert into the calcaneus. The last knee flexor muscle is the popliteus. The popliteus muscle initiates knee flexion and unlocks the knee. It originates from the lateral femoral condyle and inserts into the posterior surface of the proximal tibia. In summary, we talked about the knee joint function and movement. We divided the different structures into a few main categories. 
bones, joints, ligaments, meniscus, and lastly, muscles and tendons.